Hospital and today we are going to show you how to do a lower leg bandage and upper leg bandage using our demonstration course. Uh, to go through before we get started, we're going to go through some of the supplies that you'll need for bandages at home. Uh, if you don't have these supplies, you can get them from us here at the hospital or we can have them drop shipped to your house. Um, with horses with wounds, sometimes we start with an inner bandage. We use a telfa up against the wound so the gauze doesn't stick to it. Um, if the wound is a lot of exudate or a lot of drainage, we'll use some gauze, um, an inner gauze, and then some elasticon directly on the uh, inner bandage. It is really important that if you're using um, or doing a bandage change with a lot of drainage and exudate that you wear gloves because you don't want to transfer the bacteria to other places. Uh, once we get our inner bandage on, we'll go to a couple quilts. Uh, quilts are, you can buy these at the at, uh, tax stores, feed stores. Again, from us, we can have them drop shipped. Um, and then on that, we'll have an outer wrap. All right, if you have any bandages or wounds that are very um, exudative or have a lot of drainage and you don't want to use cloth, uh, you, don't want to, you don't want to wash these in your own washing machine, you can use disposable bandages, again, from us or uh, drop shipped to your house. Um, these are disposable cottons that we can sell in 10 yard rolls or actually as individual rolls. Uh, and then on top of that, in, in replace, uh, replacement of these, we use just some roll gauze and some vet wrap. And uh, for the top of the bandage and bottom of the bandage, we'll use some more elasticon. For this bandage, imagine that there's a wound mid cannon bone. And so we're going to just imagine that there's a wound on the back of the leg. So we're going to put the inner bandage on. Again, we use a telfa pad and a six inch roll gauze. Some people will tell you that rolling the uh, tendons in or tendons out are very important. Uh, there's really, we don't believe either way. Rolling them in or out, it's just we like to see a good smooth bandage. And so we'll put the telfa directly to the wound and then start the, the roll gauze. Try not to get any wrinkles or any major. Uh, we don't want to pull too tight, we just want to roll it on and use the whole roll. Give it some padding. Again, we're not pulling it tight, we're just rolling it on nice and flat. Then on top of that, we'll use Elasticon. Key with Elasticon is Elasticon has an adhesive backing and it does stretch. So when we put it on, we want to pull it, but we want it to relax before we put it on because it can be constrictive and actually cut off blood supply and cause some swelling. And so you lay a little bit, about half of it, overlapping the bandage to the skin and hair, and then un unroll it. Again, pulling it, letting it relax, laying it nice and flat, no wrinkles. It's got a red line on the middle and it just basically overlap about half. The next layer, we'll put one of our quilts on. And it's very important that we start at the coronary band and go up. We don't want it to actually see any of the, of the hair or skin. In this case, you can see that our, our bandage extended a little bit above it, and if it does extend above, then we'll put a second layer on, so we'll show you that in a second. With this, you can pull it fairly tight, or basically very firm, uh, across the front, and then you want to roll on the back. It's very important that we leave a little bit of white exposed at the bottom so that the wrap doesn't get directly against the skin and cause the irritation or cording of the tendons. Again, you can pull across the front, roll on the back. And again, we want to see white at the top and the bottom. Just finish out this roll. It's important when you end your vet wrap or end your, your track bandage that you actually end it above the fetlock because the motion of the fetlock sometimes will cause it to come off. Now with this bandage, because we extended above it, we would go ahead and put another bandage on. You can go above this one. You want to overlap just a little bit. And you can continue this up the leg. If you had to do a third one, you could overlap and go up to the elbow. Now because we have cotton underneath it, we can go all the way down to the bottom on this one and not leave any white exposed. Pulling across the front, rolling on the back. Going all the way up and then we're going to leave a little bit of white at the top exposed. And then we can just 
take a little bit of elasticon and put a roll of elasticon at the top to keep, it, keep the bandage from falling down. Again, pulling it, letting it relax, and then rolling it on. And there you have a complete bandage. When putting bandages on the hind limb, they're vir virtually the same as the front limb. There's a couple other things we need to take into consideration. Uh, one is the bandages tend to be a little bit shorter, so you may need to use a little bit longer bandage. Um, these are probably 12 inches, more like a 14 inch bandage will get you up the leg a little bit higher. Um, and then virtually the same principle when overlapping the lower bandage. Uh, we wrap around the, the leg, taking into consideration that it's at an angle, so it'll have, have to be wrapped a little bit differently. One of the most important parts when wrapping a hock is to not go too tight over the back of the calcaneus, which is the point of the hock, because that can develop a pressure sore. So when doing the hock bandage going around the hock, it's important that you just figure out the point of the hock and not put pressure directly on the back of the hock. And here you have a complete full limb bandage on a hind limb. Again, you can put elasticon at the top of the bandage, just like you did on the front of the bandage. Occasionally when we send a horse home with a wound and a bandage, uh, the, the wound will be severe enough that it will require a splint. Uh, typically with splints we're using them to reduce motion. Um, this is a distal limb splint or a lower leg splint, uh, good for wounds around the ankle, just above in the mid cannon bone area. And the key to these are that they're PVC and rigid. Uh, we've cut the points off of them, we've got them bent to the natural angle of the fetlock. Uh, you put the bandage on just like you would put a normal bandage on. Uh, the, the point of the, the, the fetlock fits right about the middle of the bend, and it goes on the back side. And the key to these are that you want to make sure that you have a lot of padding on the bottom side of the splint and padding on the top side of the splint. This one's a little, little higher uh, with this bandage. Uh, you can drop it down a little bit. Uh, when you put these on, it's very important that you put them on as fairly tight, fairly firm, because you want to reduce the motion. If you've got a nice thick padded bandage underneath it, pressure sores really shouldn't become a big problem. Um, with a small one like this, you just start at the top using duct tape. Uh, we use Gorilla Tape because it's a lot stronger than standard duct tape. Uh, but you just go around the splint. Sometimes it's important to do a, a ring at the top and then a ring at the bottom and then you can go from the top to the bottom. Uh, but he's not moving around so I'm just going to start pulling it. And then you can pull across the front, pull up across the back. You want this to go on fairly tight. And when you have the splint on, it's very important that it, when you have the horse at home that you're watching um, for any soreness, lameness, if the horse wasn't lame before the splint was put on, he shouldn't be lame with the splint on. Uh, areas that you can need to watch are the heel bulbs, the point of the, uh, point of the feet or heels, and also at the top. Uh, these splints, even though there's good padding here, if they stand um, kind of awkwardly in the stall, they can rub it. If they stand with their leg forward or backward, it, it'll hit at different points. Um, so twice a day it's good to get your finger kind of down in the bandage around the splint and make sure there's no uh, moist spots or any wounds that are formed. Um, one last thing to kind of talk about with bandage maintenance and bandage, um, how often should you change it? It really depends on the bandage. If a wound has got a lot of extra drainage, we recommend changing it every day or two. Um, typically a wound that's just granulation tissue that's in the kind of the, the long haul, we may leave on it for five to seven days depending on how much extra day. Um, so it's pretty much the basis of managing and coming to Kunz Equine Hospital. If you have any questions, you can always call us here at the hospital.